good afternoon so uh, today i am here to present something that we made to you all uh, we are a team consisting of four the three people there and myself so uh, this is uh, so this in this presentation we'll go through it in four sections we'll first say oh, just sorry it's not going it's not going Okay, so we'll go through this in four sections. First, I'll tell you what this is, and then I'll tell you what we are aiming to solve, and then, uh, I mean, what we aim to solve, uh, to be honest. Then, I'll tell you how we solved it, and how this is a DIY solution, as in how you can get cloud connectivity enabled in your cars through this using our solution. Okay, so we'll first say what this is. Okay, so what do you mean by cloud connectivity in vehicles? Okay, so you have a cloud, the cloud meaning the internet itself is the cloud, and then uh, usually what all is con what all connected to the cloud? You have you have your what do you call it? you have your phone, you have your laptop, everything is connected to the cloud. Uh, and uh, if you think about it, you can actually communicate between these devices can communicate with, with each other, and you can control uh, one device from another. Not entirely obviously, but uh, you can view view some information of one device in another device and do all of that. So this thing is basically simple. We just add. We, sorry, we just add your uh, car to the mix. Like we just connect your car also to this network, so that you can actually monitor your car and uh, uh, in the future hopefully control it from your other devices. So, what is the current status of such systems in India? Okay, so uh, we, uh, we are just specifically focusing on India right now, and in uh, within India we are only uh, focusing on the budget sector, like. You may be tempted to say, yeah, Tesla, you can control it through, through the app and all that. Of course, I know. Okay, I accept. But we are not going to the expensive end of things or we are not trying to go on a global scale here. We are just talking about India and we are only talking about budget vehicles right now. So, of course, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, this tech is basically, this tech is really expensive to get in uh, to the R&D and the manufacturing and all of this tech is expensive. So, any cars which have this tech are expensive. Uh, to the end consumer and then uh, the whole point of this is that any solutions which exist today are closed source there are no open source solutions to solve this problem so uh, what i mean by this is that uh, we will uh, dive deeper into this closed source problem later on so then there is the fragmentation uh, if you know uh, this, this fragmentation thing is the same as with android manufacturers so if you have this uh, if you have you have lots of android manufacturers and they uh, make they write firmware in lots of ways they have the, the, the uh, AOSP is customized in lots of ways. Xiaomi does MIUI, then uh, Samsung does their one UI, and uh, Pixel does Dock Android, and all of that. And the whole system is fragmented. And uh, you, as an app developer, when you try to write software for it, the uh, what do you call it? your app ends up not being optimized. Okay, so uh, that's why we see many games run slower on Androids versus iPhones and, and all of that. Thing. So the same thing applies here. We will also talk about that later on. So, what are we aiming for? So, uh, when I said, yeah, we have to enable cloud connectivity and all that, so we have to actually extend the functionality of your car and car, right? If you are doing, if you are taking the, what do you call it, if you are taking the effort to actually build our, do the DIY solution, build our solution and get it in your car, you should have some kind of value from it. So, we have to extend the functionality of your car and then we have to make sure that this works across the, uh, all the old and cheap cars running right now in our roads, not the uh, new and expensive cars coming out. We have to aim for and we have to make it work in all the existing cars on the road and the cheap cars, obviously. And then uh, we have to have cheap hardware for uh, you to get started. And then, uh, as I said, we have to provide some value. So uh, in all in all, 
I will give you a glimpse of what we aim to achieve and then I will I'll tell you what we have achieved. Okay, just, just, uh, take a look at this quick video. So this mobile phone is running on mobile data and the car is being driven. But as you can see, something is, some data is being displayed in real time in the mobile, which is connected to a different network. The phone is not connected to the car in any sort of way. So, uh, so this is what we are aiming to achieve. I will tell you how we are make, going to make this happen. So let's uh, look at the existing solutions. So we have to, we can, so what are the commercial solutions doing the same thing or aiming to do the same thing in production today? What are the commercial solutions which you can buy and use today? So let's first look at Apple AirTags and these are like, oh sorry, that ain't, that ain't force, this is a force meter, sorry. So you have your normal trackers. Your normal trackers meaning you have the child trackers and all the trackers, uh, the, the, you get this one tracker. I am. I hope you are all aware of this. Anyway, I'll just brief you about it. Uh, you get a tracker, you pair it to your phone, and let's take child trackers for example. And uh, if you can put it in, put it anywhere. You put it in your bag, put it on the collar of your pet or whatever. And if this object or if this animal or whatever goes missing, the way this works is that whenever a whenever a tracker comes close comes into proximity with any other user or any other phone or any other tracker. Uh, it just pings its location to that device or tracker, to that, to that phone or tracker or whatever. And as such, in the global tile database, the location of each tracker is kept updated. And now, as you can already guess, this has many shortcomings. The reason why uh, Apple solution is the best here is that, I hate to say it, but it is the best because iPhones are in abundance and they can tap into water, Apple can tap into whatever iPhone they want and uh, actually update the location of all their trackers. With Tile and with any other alternate solution for that case, these, if, if you are using a Tile tracker, you need to have people who are using the Tile app. You, are, you have to have the Tile app installed within your phone. Uh, so say uh, I put my uh, tracker into a bag, I lose my bag, and then my friends uh, over here, Ijaz and maybe they will have Tile apps installed on their phones. And when they pass by the tracker, the tracker can ping their phones and update its location. Okay, so now the problem comes, what if no one has installed the Tile app? Because as we know, uh, it, most of you don't have, I mean, I mean, none of you have Tile apps installed in your phone, right? Because we are not using Tile trackers. With the case of Apple, they don't need to have any AirTag specific app installed. They can just use their iOS to make this. So now you can see why this is a cumbersome solution for just tracking your car. So how do we improve upon this? The next solution came in the form of connected GPS trackers. This thing is that uh, this, uh, these, these are small trackers, we, they have inbuilt GPS and GSM within them. So GSM means you can put a SIM card, it's just an electronic model that supports a SIM card. So uh, this tracker has a SIM card slot and you, it has a GPS module and uh, you can put this in, in whatever you want, like, like I said, cars or whatever and you can have a SIM card and this device will automatically update its own location. Again, the, here the short term is that you don't get anything specific to the vehicle or uh, in our case car or whatever. You don't get anything specific to the vehicle. You just get the, get its location. That is of uh, there is that is of of course of value, but we can aim a bit more higher. So ne next you have fleet track. Uh, this is like a car startup operating uh, just to solve this problem. But here their solution is that they don't have any plug and play solutions or DIY solutions or any open source solutions. They have this device that can actually that can actually be fitted into the car with the help of a mechanic, and then that has a SIM card inside it. It will connect with the vehicle and also provide live location. These are the commercial solutions which we have in production right now. And then I'm giving an honorable mention to uh, Open Pilot by Coma AI. Coma AI is a company founded by uh, George Hotz. I don't know if you have heard of him. He was the first person to hack into the uh, hack into a jailbreak the iPhone. But yeah, whatever. Uh, Open Pilot, what it does is that it is actually uh, a totally open source product. You can actually go into Open Pilot's GitHub repository and view the thing. The thing is that they have an Android phone. You can see an Android phone here. Uh, this is called the Coma device uh, because the company's name Coma, so the device is named Coma 3. And this can actually fit into the windshield of your car and this can actually connect to the internal systems in your car, car using a jack. It is called pa uh, Panda. You can actually, uh, the thing can actually connect to your car. And when you just mount this device in your car, the car becomes self-driving. I mean, just think about it. You just put an Android phone in your car and car, and the car just becomes self-driving. 
of course of course then this is the uh, og solution right but no because in order for this to work you need to have very expensive cars so uh, what open belt actually does is that it actually taps into the uh, ada systems in your car if, they, if you have uh, driven cars with cruise control systems or lane keeper systems these have sensors in the front and cameras on the windshield so, so what open belt does is that it taps into these feeds and it adds a layer on top of uh, those feeds with its inbuilt cameras there's a camera here and there's a camera in the back of the device so it does that and then it uses the info to drive the car and also another thing is that in order for the, this to drive the car there should be motors in the steering wheel that is the uh, the car should be ca computer controlled or else uh, what can i say if there is no way to in give inputs electronically to the car then you can't just uh, simply control the car right so this also needs uh, expensive and specialized cars and coma needs to support the cars in order for you to get it working so again this is not a cheap solution by any means but of course it is diy and open source so what is our solution so our solution uh, uses just mainly just three components a raspberry pi and a gps module and an elm 327 adapter i will just go through each of these components in the next slides detail so this is the this is uh, the whole cost whole of bill of materials of all these components i think uh, mounts to around 3000 rupees which is uh, in a way affordable when you compare it to uh, solutions like coma 3 which cost around 1 lakh i think 80000 or something uh, because it's 1000 dollars yeah so whatever cost of 10k plus so your r5 is so oh, he's coming to that point because i think the cheapest r5 we can get is about Ten. no 6 4 4 gigs right so, so what what are the no he's using a, you're using a full fledged arpa right? yeah right so which arpa are you using 4 gb yeah 2 gb oh 2 gb yeah the old 3 i am using you can use uh, yeah, gigs, right? yeah sure yeah. even if it's 4 gb i mean the cost is still comparable to the other solution right like the comma so 3 so the problem right now with okay. uh, raspberry pi is that they raise your costs and it's become a kind of like un unaffordable it's, raspberry pi is not our old raspberry pi anymore yeah so now there's a lot of chinese clones that are coming in which are like super cheap especially the orange pi those guys are giving like basically a pentium pc at like six thousand eight seven thousand rupees i'm sorry i'm, I'm just saying yeah, yeah even even in that case our software is just a simple yeah. python script that runs in the pi you can just easily port it to correct that is why you're making the open source which i'll talk about more later then so uh, of course why didn't we go with all the rpi r alternatives we had the pico we had the uno we had the esp32 all of that for this simple application you might think yeah you are right for this simple application you we can actually use any of these alternatives sure but the uh, thing is that we are planning to extend and work on this more so uh, we need a reliable platform to extend this without losing you know without uh, getting performance issues so that's why we opted to go for a proper full blown rp so now the device so this is the device so uh, it is just uh, i can just hold it in my hand right it is just portable so what we want you to do is we have uh, we have actually uh, open sourced every aspect of this project so i i request you to ask as contributors if you can build, build better looking devices we will accept your devices and put them on the repository and put them uh, like uh, take them as the main uh, device for our project so this this just it's like a black box of a plane right which i can hold it in my hand it's not very cute and it just doesn't look, go well with the aesthetics of all cars so you if you can make any solution that looks even better we will accept it we will just make it the main solution okay it's just that you need to have all these components in your uh, device okay so now i just walk you through an example procedure of how to set up a device so uh, again all that is in this device is this much there's an rpi there's a gps module can you see there's a gps module and then there's a push button and in a under side under the device we have a power bank just so that the pi doesn't die on us this much only so i think uh, this circuit diagram is also open source uh, you can actually get it on our readme uh, so if, you, if, if you, i think anybody with a basic taste in electronics can just uh, buy these components and connect them together. That's all, that's all the device there. So there's no real circuit diagrams. It's basically, you're taking components, you're connecting it together, yeah. right? So there's, and I, I, maybe the push button is... Yeah, and the, the pin numbers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we don't need to have any confusion or anything. That's why, right. yeah. 
So uh, after, once you set up this device, uh, let's see how you can install the software in this device. I just this is a fresh buy. This uh, I have uh, only enabled the serial monitor with sudo rasp config, and we'll just now set up. We'll just follow the instructions step by step, and we'll set up this device uh, right in front of your eyes. Okay. Dude, Raspberry Pi is running Raspberry. Yeah, Raspberry. Can increase the font size. <coughs> so this is two gigs, is it? Uh, RAM? Yeah, two gigs. Okay, everything uh, everything that you need is in our GitHub repository. I invite you to come check it out. So now we'll just uh, download this and install. I mean, sorry, I'll just, I'll just simply copy paste the commands. Everything is written out and documented for you. You just have to copy paste the commands and you'll have your working device. Here I'm not doing anything, I'm just cloning the GitHub repository and installing all the uh, required Python modules. Uh, you don't even need to know how this works in order to get started. You just need to, you just have to copy paste the commands. Okay, once you get uh, you're good to go when you have run the uh, when you have run the check script you can you will get a message saying that you're good to go and all the models have been installed and appeared working fine that's it and now you can just uh, go ahead and set up the device Okay, so uh, you will be using one device for one vehicle, right? So uh, you have you can name your device. Yeah, you, sorry, you can name your vehicle to identify it later in your mobile app. We ha we actually remember our solution is to con uh, connect this car to the cloud and uh, monitor it from your phone and do order with it. So uh, you can just give a uh, basic uh, identification for this car. I'll just give I just say the brand of this car as Force United. <laughs> yeah, sure. And so, what do you want to name the car? Any suggestions? You can name the car anything, just give a name. Auto. 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 Okay, so uh, this uh, uh, I hope you can. I'm not uh, covering the screen, right? You can all see the terminal. All I just uh, did, I said I just copy pasted the commands. I gave a brand name and a name of the car, and I got a QR code. Okay, so now just yes, can you please come and sc uh, scan the code in our app? You can just uh, get the app also from GitHub. You can just sign up and you can uh, pair this car using this pairing code. Sign up. Uh, you mean sign up into GitHub or sign up for your app? For, for the app. Oh. Where, is, where is your app available? Uh, in the, I'll just share the link yeah. at the end. Of you can show it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, sure. After everything else. Okay, so, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, just, just scan it. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will get back to the app later on. Anyway, you can see a glimpse of what you what you're getting in the app right now. And now, oh, since you've set it up, I'll just go a little bit more into how this system works. Okay, so 
I, I uh, think that most of you might be interested in that. So we'll get back to the app later on. Just stay on with me, hang on with me for a while. So let's now look at how this actually works. So from car to cloud, uh, obviously we have to get, get data from the car to put it to the cloud and then we have to use a mobile app to get the cloud uh, data back from the cloud. Uh, yeah, and then we have the cloud itself. So let's first look at car, from, car to cloud. Now, uh, how many of you have seen this port? How many of you have seen this port in your car? Two, okay, so okay, two people have seen it, three people have seen it, okay. Okay, so for those who haven't, I'll just brief you about this. This port is called the OBD, so it stands for Onboard Diagnostics. It is mandated by law to be present in all cars manufactured after 1996. Okay, so uh, your old Maruti 800s won't have it, I'm sorry. We can't extend stuff out to the legacy Maruti 800s or Altos of the world, sorry. But, yeah, Premier Patnis and Ambassadors don't have it, sorry. We can't ex extend support for that. Okay, those are depreciated. No? Deprecated. Ah, deprecated, yeah. Sorry. Okay, uh, th all other cars have this port. So, uh, this port, you might not be knowing, is hiding some uh, little se secrets for us. The thing is that your car is actually a computer on wheels. If, uh, whether you believe it or not, there are lots of computers, at least in modern cars, that make the that enable the car to just even get moving. Uh, the mechanical engineers can bluff about yeah all the petrol engines and everything, but it's fine. I think everyone is able to hear. Ah yeah okay. Okay now it's okay. okay. Yeah they can bluff about all the petrol engines and mechanics, but without computers, ca cars won't get start or get moving. The engines won't keep running. The engines will just stall and fail. Yeah so all those computers can have errors too. All those computers need to be debugged too, and they need to be serviced, they need to be taken care of, and yeah, whatever. So all of these computers are actually wired up to form a huge network of wires inside the car. Uh, actually, some uh, I have seen reports stating that if you stretch all the wires out inside the car, you will get a 1 mile or 11 mile long track of wires or something. There are lots of computing systems in the, inside the car, and all of them are mapped to this onboard diagnostics port. So uh, each of these pins in this port have a what do you call uh, special connection like uh, some, some pins are connected to the CAN bus, some pins are connected to other critical systems, some pins provide power and, power and so on and so forth. But we don't have to bother ourselves with all of that. The point is that these uh, cars within this, uh, in this in the, in the internal networks, what happens is that each car uses a different protocol to communicate. When I say each car, I mean each brand uses a different protocols to communicate. So in, within the industry, there are like three protocols uh, aware, uh, in use today. So let me break this down for, from, for you. How many of you here are web developers? Just raise your hand. Okay. So uh, for a web developer, I will break this down. Imagine you have, uh, you have, uh, you are making an extension that should uh, be able to debug any kind of website that loads in your browser, okay? Okay, you're trying to make an extension. So now we know that load, all of these websites are using a load, I mean, a varied variety of text text, be it React, Angular, Vue, or whatever, maybe vanilla JavaScript, if someone's up for that, maybe WebAssembly, or whatever. They are using all of that, but when the site loads up in your computer, or in your uh, browser, you should be able to, uh, your extension should be able to identify what that site is made up of and uh, kind of, uh, what should I say, kind of uh, enable you to debug effectively. So that is the uh, kind of extension that you're aiming to make. Likewise, this device considered as the extension that you're trying to make. Now, uh, imagine these protocols as the different varied, varied variety of web frameworks. Okay, so now what is the OBD port then? The OBD port is simply your developer console. It just gives you access to the whole source code of the site and you can actually uh, browse through uh, any of the code. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe compiled. If it is React, it may be compiled into some form. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can. Uh, so the OBD port is a console, and the device that you are making is the extension. And these protocols are the different web frameworks. So uh, I think you might be getting an idea of how we need to unify all of these protocols and uh, bring them together to a single point. Are you are you getting the gist of what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of, right? Okay. 
So now let's look at the situation now at which brands are using this. Okay. And again, I am showing data right now about uh, cars typically, f I would say three or four year, uh, years old, this data was totally re relevant. Now uh, this uh, landscape has started to change, but still uh, it, it is, uh, you, you can infer many things from this data. Okay. Let's first look at the brands using only the ISO 9142 protocol. Uh, as you can see, the Japanese are sticking to this protocol. I think the Japanese love, love this protocol. The Hondas, the Toyotas, the Marudis, I mean, sorry, Suzuki's. Yeah, they love the protocol. Okay. Now, what you have, now they have the Americans. They are using a combination of CAN and SAE protocols. Then you have, uh, who's this? All the Germans and Koreans. Yeah, the Germans and Koreans are in love with CAN and ISO. They are using it as a mix, I think. And then you have, uh, wow, then you have the American, other American brands that are using all the protocols. Okay, wow. Uh, now it's over. No, okay, so what do we have here? Uh, now, the, uh, now, I would say CAN is the most effective of protocols. Okay. Uh, the cars with the most advanced tech have CAN. So in recent years, Honda and Toyota have also shifted more towards CAN. But Maharaj Suzuki maintaining its commitment to give Indians uh, tech, what do you call it? Supercars have still stuck with ISO protocols, but uh, all of the other brands have moved into a mix of protocols. No one is using a single protocol. It is even if you can figure out, yeah, this car belongs to one brand. If you have a Honda Amaze and a Honda Civic, you can just say, yeah, the Amaze belongs to Honda and the Civic also belongs to Honda. So they might be using the one protocol. They may be using one protocol, but no, Civic is using CAN and the, what you call, uh, the Amaze is using ISO because Amaze is a low tech car. Civic is a high tech car. And now, uh, when you take Volkswagen Group, this just blows away because uh, Volkswagen Group itself consists of many cars. You have Volkswagen, Skoda, Audi, Porsche, everyone everyone is, comes under Volkswagen Group and each of those cars uses a different protocol. So, what we do here is uh, we use a, an adapter known as the ELM327, this is the one, just costs around 300 rupees only. So, we use this has an, uh, it has a female OBD connector as you can see. It just plugs into the OBD port in your car, okay. And now, this this uh, adapter has built-in uh, ways to detect the protocol. Basically what it does is that uh, it, it just pings the car with what our protocol it thinks. It has a list of, uh, imagine an array of all the protocols, it just iterates through each of the elements and tries to ping the car. Whenever the car responds correctly, it just fixates on that protocol and then it uses that protocol from then on. Now we also have a library, we have a, a Python module uh, known as OBD itself. It, just the same thing, if you browse the source code of that model, you, you will understand how it's working. It's just, it's using the same algorithm, it just cycles through protocols, just brute force cycles through protocols and selects which one that works. Okay, so now we have sorted out the car to cloud front. We, have, we, we, we get the data, we get to the pie and we send it to the cloud. Okay, uh, the car to cloud part is sorted. Everyone is okay with that? Everyone on board with me? Okay, next, now from cloud to user. This is where I think uh, most of you will be eager to contribute and you will be able to contribute uh, most easily. So, the mobile app, it was written entirely by two folks, Joel and Ijaz, and the UI UX was designed by Jidin, uh, three people sitting here. So, this is their first React Native, uh, this is their first app development project. So, obviously, there are uh, many areas in which you can improve, but and then also the point is that being in React Native, it, the thing is easy to improve, right? Uh, I think many web developers are uh, here might be knowing frameworks like React and all. You can easily catch up on this and you can contribute. We welcome any contributions that you might have. And now let's get into the server. So the cloud itself. Now the app just takes uh, data from the cloud and displays it to you. It is just an interface, I would say, to the whole system. Now let's talk about the cloud itself. The cloud is written in Rust and it uses a framework known as Actix. Uh, uh, okay, so. Let's uh, first go to the architecture of how the cloud works. Imagine you have two cars. So these two cars should have should be able to uh, communicate with multiple users, right? So I can own two cars, okay? Or I can be in a family which has two cars. But uh, my mom and dad want to, uh, my parents want to just uh, take care of this Octavia with the red car, okay? And I have, I personally own the white car and I have to manage both of these simultaneously. So the architecture has to allow, uh, again, some of you, uh, like there, you may be familiar with MQTT, you may be asking, why didn't we just simply use MQTT and do it? I will also explain that. Uh, there's no uh, valid reason to why we didn't use it, but still I will explain it, uh, what happened during the development cycle. Uh, okay, so as each car joins the server or the cloud, we create a room for it. 
Okay, imagine a lobby in a hotel room which has multiple rooms and each car creates and holds on to a room uh, by itself. The car is in control of the room. The car is the administrator of the room. Okay, so whatever happens in the room, the car decides. If the car leaves, the room automatically is just, uh, what do you call it, uh, gets destroyed and all the people in that room are uh, get thrown out. And now, if people uh, want to come in and monitor uh, a car, let's say one user wants to come in and monitor the car, that is me, L let's say that is me, and now I can come in and I can join the two rooms simultaneously. Okay. So now, uh, if another person wants to come in and monitor just the one car, uh, they can also come in and join to the only one room which is required. So now, uh, this, this, this architecture is primarily to enable live tracking uh, of uh, what you call in the, the, the thing that you just saw the app showing all the details of the, the data coming from the car. So this architecture is primarily to uh, do that. Now, uh, as uh, now each car, when it holds onto a room, it will broadcast whatever data it has, like the speedometer, the RPM, whatever we get from this uh, device. We, the vehicle will just broadcast in that room. So what whoever is in that room can actually uh, take in, uh, get a hold of that data and make use of it. And also the server is written in a way that uh, the vehicle can whisper to one of the uh, connected clients or connected users. Although we are not making use of that functionality, yes, the, uh, yet the server still, uh, just supports it. So uh, it can be used for in future for development. Now all of this is uh, connected to a central database, which is a MongoDB database, and um, all of these, all of this data coming through is also logged in the database. I will tell you what that is used for later on. Uh, anyway, just uh, I think have you got a rough idea of what is uh, how our server architecture works? Okay. So, okay, so what's left to solve and how you can contribute. We are welcoming any of your contributions, any simple or big ideas that you might have. We want you to contribute to the project. So in the app, as I said, there are lots of areas to be improved. Uh, and even if you are a Figma designer, we welcome you. If uh, anyone here is a, a, a like exclusively a UI UX designer, anyone? No one, everyone is, everyone are coders, okay. But uh, whatever. Uh, even if you are a exclusive UI UX designer, we still welcome you. If you can make changes to the app, we will incorporate that. Okay, so we welcome you. And then uh, in the device, uh, anything like I said, you can actually make the device smaller. We will accept your device, and this will be the main device from then on. And uh, of course, uh, the, the here uh, in this current version, uh, threading is not uh, what do you call done the most uh, in the most effective manner. Like. I am sure uh, Devdath has actually take, uh, just spoken about uh, green threads. So I hope if, if you can, if you guys can use use green threads and apply it effectively to this device, we welcome those PRs also to improve the performance. And then in the cloud, I will tell you. So, so why did I not? Uh, there are some stuff that we can improve in the cloud as well. So why did I not use MQTT? So MQTT uh, is like a protocol. Okay, so uh, you can actually uh, this is a protocol by which one device can actually publish a topic and some other clients can subscribe to it and get the data. So uh, again, uh, the point to be is that I didn't know what MQTT was. Okay, I didn't know MQTT existed during the, when I started developing. And we actually presented this uh, as our mini project for college. So we had a very strict timeline to finish development. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't, what do you call, explore the possibilities of MQTT. So we couldn't simply use it. But the thing is that, this system is very much fit to use MQTT. The MQTT protocol is what it does is that uh, if you can, if you have uh, someone uh, who can publish a topic, say, like we actually discussed about the vehicle details being broadcasted, right, right, uh, just before. So if the vehicle can just publish this, uh, these vehicle uh, details uh, as a publisher, all the clients can simply subscribe to that and get their info, get the info that they need. This huge, this like vastly improves, vastly simplifies the architecture. But instead of doing that, I uh, by from scratch, I wrote the whole thing in Rust. So again, uh, we can actually incorporate MQTT even afterwards. So any any contributions uh, incorporating such changes are very much welcome. And then obviously any deployment techniques. We are currently using just simple nginx and EC2 to deploy uh, because I didn't find anything uh, more. What do you call? more uh, sophisticated to deploy. I'm not using Docker, even uh, Docker we are not using yet. So any other impro improvements in that area is welcome. Then uh, optimization algorithms. If you are any lead code or DSA kings here, 
you can actually improve the algorithms and we will again merge that as well. So uh, at last I will show you what this looks like. I will show you uh, what it looks like when you combine all of this together. All of this together. And uh, um, let's see, uh, it's a short promo video. So I don't know if uh, it's audio uh, available through the stream. You have to connect to Bluetooth. Oh, through the stream it should be, yeah, it should should be. but through uh, here you, can you, have to yeah. oh, you can keep the mic um, here okay okay, okay. Uh, no i think you can just keep the mic here but name alpha drive so it looks so common so i will remove it so now it's alpha drive <laughs> so now uh, so, so the, i'm sure there are uh, some things that you saw didn't make sense right away you saw vehicle health reports okay what do all of that mean remember the database i talked about earlier in the server that each vehicle can uh, any of the data flowing through is captured to the database i think you remember that right so Imagine you are renting your uh, car to someone, you are lending your car to someone, you don't know how they drive, okay, and you, they are returning to you after a couple of days. And the device will tell you, the system will tell you how much health degradation has occurred due to that driving stay in the amount of time that they have driven the, uh, driven the car. And it will also give you uh, how much uh, the daily stats for that car. So where so, is this calculation happening? In the server. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, so... Uh, I think uh, in, in a personal uh, viewpoint, I mean personal perspective, uh, maybe this might not make sense at first, but when you think about a fleet perspective, imagine these all the self-drive car rentals that uh, are giving out, lending out cars, right? So, uh, so uh, in their case, this would make a lot of sense. If you give a car to someone, you don't know how they have managed it, and if you return it, to, if they return to you, you can actually uh, use this system to monitor the car and also this, this has, since this has built-in GPS you can actually track your car uh, so uh, summing up all of this what I have to say is that we are completely open sourcing the project we are we don't have any intentions, intentions of closing down or giving a proprietary or anything hence why I'm presenting it in a post meetup and I want I request everyone to uh, get your hands on the components and try to build a DIY device I'm not forcing you I can't force you obviously and we welcome any kind of contributions, any kind of minor or major contributions to the project which you guys can give. I want, uh, we are, uh, we want this to succeed as an open source project, not a closed source one. So we'll be waiting for our contributions. Thank you. So I have a quick suggestion here. Uh, it's great that you are open sourcing it, but uh, nowadays people want convenience, right? And DIY, like I know, I understand some people will be. Uh, preferring that but probably this is a good startup idea you could start a startup that helps people uh, monitor their cars 
yeah, yeah we subscription model <laughs> okay you don't have to close source you can ah. keep it open source and okay. provide the subscription uh, service is it cost that you can do yeah, cost cost you can do cost. a cost commercial open source you can talk <laughs> with like, and the model like for a hardware stuff you can actually keep the software part of it come yeah. it so the software for it is basically almost fully open Uh, yeah, that, uh, that that thing is that. Yeah, Koma does it does that. But for us, if we are DIY, if we are trying to open source, the, remember the OBD port I told you, right? So we have to scale the device into this form. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, that yeah, is your. That is, yeah, that's the thing. So that so since we have to do that, that will take a lot of cost, right? So I don't know how it is going to play out. You can slowly start off. No, no. You can ask for funding. You can ask for. Uh, you can hire people to do this. Yeah. No, I think wait. Yeah. So how 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 much? What's the minimum requirements you need for this? Because now you're using a two gig. Looks like you don't need two gigs. You don't need a full. Yeah, yeah, full blown RPM. From what I saw right now, it doesn't feel like you need a full fledged RPM. Yeah, uh, uh, we are planning to. Uh, the thing why we added the RAS RAS for five is that now we are actually planning to get a display onto this, like a smart infotainment system which also connects to the car. So that is like the eventually. That's why we opted to go with the RPA, the full blown RPA. Of course, we can use ESP32 or whatever. Maybe you can try with something like a maybe that uh, Raspberry Pi, that zero watt version. Yeah. I think that has one gig, almost two gigs. Pi twelve. Pi twelve MBA, right? Let me know. Oh, is it? Lowest. Lowest. Yeah, I think Pi twelve is enough for this. It should be more than enough. Yeah, you can rewrite it in Rust. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. What's what's stopping? with obd obd you can't do that because uh, it's like a debug port yeah it's a it's a debug port you can't so, so what no, no. why can't you do that with uh, obd is what uh, the central locking systems aren't actually wired yeah, to the right. obd yeah. yeah because obviously that is for security if they wire to the obd someone can just yeah. okay If, I mean, in the mobile, what they do is, if manufacturer gives you that option, what they do is that yeah, they have special access to the car. So, so this uh, is just for debugging. So for debugging, even in our computers and all that, we have a special electrical port just to get debug signal. Maybe the system won't start up, but that it's run on a separate chip also, which will be powered. So like when your laptops and all the start up, you know, we had do the post thing, right? It will even before the BIOS thing that post runs. Then the BIOS runs on it, right? So it's running a whole bunch of debug sequences, and then we. So I have some uh, experience working with teams who are doing something similar. Uh, there's a team of people uh, who are working on this project where it's sort of being inter- integrated in all these trucks. Uh, but this is they are not using OBD. They are uh, keeping a device which is right in front of the you know, on the dashboard, right? Uh, which will monitor the user also, right? It, uh, the driver, and yeah. keep track of their uh, um, like uh, attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm assuming it's much more expensive, right? Yeah, it's like it's just a Jetson Nano with the. Uh, oh, Jetson Nano is expensive. Yes, <laughs> yes, but it's expensive. Yeah. It's like I think the twenty-eight. What? No, uh, we start uh, the minimum uh, Jetson Nano four gig starts at what? Ninety thousand rupees? Oh, uh, ninety. I think so. It's a full-fledged GPU, man. It's built on the. It's built on. Yeah, Jetson, yeah. Uh, Jetson Open Belt actually does this right now. Uh, the, in the device that I told you, the Koma three has a front-facing camera, so I think they do it also. Sorry, not ninety. The kit comes as ninety. I think the module alone, did, because see, 20, the, the module is like putting a CPU onto the. The they call it what? Uh, they call it some kind of board. I think. PCB. No, no. We can call. I think it's called some attachment board or something. They have that board is like thirty thousand, forty thousand rupees. Then you can change the modules. You can go for, yeah. So this is 20k. Yeah. So that is 20, 20, 20, 25, 30k. Then the module is 40. I think the minimum 4 GB Jetson Nano is like I think 60. I don't know. Is that expensive? So when you put the full thing together, it's like one lakh rupees, hundred thousand. Right. It's crazy. Okay. So uh, since you all have bad with me, and we, I told you you'd return to the app earlier. So. If you have the patience and you can come down, we will demo this device that we have set up in a real car, yes. right downstairs. Hundred percent. I hope I hope for all of the contributions to come. Thank you.